this free video tutorial from mographplus.com. Make sure to visit our website and check out our premium courses for Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, Arnold Render, Maxwell, V-Ray and much more. And also make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. In this lesson we are going to be taking a look at the workflow when working with V-Ray for Cinema 4D. Uh, so if especially if you are new to the plugin and new to V-Ray and want to see how V-Ray works from the lighting to shading to rendering, this is going to be a very useful and quick lesson. So obviously the first thing to do is to set V-Ray as your render engine. So if you go to your render setting window here, you need to make sure your render is set to V-Ray. And now you got all of these options and probably the first option you want to turn it on and make sure it's enabled from the very start is indirect illumination. So this option, uh, it should be on by default and I hope uh, they're gonna kind of adjust this. Uh, so you need to make sure your GI or global illumination is enabled when you're gonna start working, right? Now, uh, after this, now we have V-Ray set as our render engine and now we need to create a camera. So I'm gonna go to my V-Ray bridge camera and add a V-Ray physical camera. Let's go in here. Let's just create a simple, doesn't have to be anything specific, maybe something like this, right? Okay, that's cool. Now we have our camera and we need to uh, basically add lights. So from V-Ray bridge menu, lights and add a V-Ray area re rectangle lights, right? And now I'm gonna get out of my camera and start Go to the area light tab, probably something like 75 centimeters would be a good and standard size. And I'm just going to place the light and rotate it around. Just make sure it's um, just put this in here. maybe something like this, right? So this is our first light. I can go back to my camera. And what I can do now is to actually run V-Ray IPR and see interactively how my light works and if needs be adjusted. So I'm gonna go to my V-Ray bridge and uh, enable V-Ray IPR. And this is what we are gonna get. So obviously I'm gonna go to my V-Ray physical camera first and Right now, let me just change the white balance to neutral, adjust the shutter speed maybe to something like 100, the ISO to something like 800. And if I select my light, in the common tab, I can adjust its, its intensity. So I'm gonna change the intensity unit to watts and let's go to something like 50, for example, okay looks like to be a bit too much. So let's go to something like 40. So as you can see, we can interactively see the changes that we are applying to our camera and to our light, right? Let's see, maybe 35. Okay, I think that looks nice. So here is our first light. Now I wanna add a secondary light to fill in this very dark shadows here. So what I can do, let me just make the IPR window a bit smaller. There you go. So what I wanna do is to select my first light and just control and drag. Let's me now also rotate it a tad. Just maybe something like this. Let's see. Okay. And what I can do is to select my secondary light and maybe increase, decrease its intensity to something like, let's say 10 uh, or even five. Let's see, maybe 7.5. So there you go. Now, basically this is our, uh, the scene with just one light, which is our main light and then we have our fill light, and here is our scene. 
Now what I can do is to stop my IPR and start creating shaders and materials and apply them to my objects. In this case, let's create a new VR Advanced material and just create a very simple material for the backdrop here. So in the diffuse layer one, so I'm just going to add this grid and apply this material to my backdrop. Just to see the grid with a bit more definition, I'm going to the options here in the material and change the preview size to something like maybe 1024 will be enough. Okay, now you can go ahead and actually adjust the UVs to your heart content if you want to, but in this case, I'm just going to leave it like that. And let's apply a very simple, very advanced material to the clock here, right? And now we can go ahead and run the IPR again. Uh, one thing that uh, you need to make sure when actually using uh, IPR is to use V-Ray shaders, right? Now we are using these, uh, basically the Cinema 4D bitmap, right? And what we need to do is to make sure we are using a V-Ray advanced bitmap. So we just add the V-Ray advanced bitmap and add the grid.png here, right? And now we should be able to actually run the IPR without having any specific issues. Let me just restart the IPR. Okay, there you go. So applied material to the subdivision surface itself. Now, as you can see, we have this very simple and we can go ahead, for example, let's see, adjust the materials. Let's maybe change the color. And as you can see, the changes are real time changes. So that's very cool. And if you add a specific change, for example, add some reflection, you can see uh, it's uh, live but in case uh, you applied and adjusted some settings and you couldn't see the result in the IPR just simply go ahead and actually restart the IPR to see that change in real time right in this case I'm actually going to disable the specular layer and change the color to that uh, default white color right okay there you go and for the backdrop also I'm probably going to disable and clear out this texture. Just a simple, very simple scene. Okay, now that we are kind of happy with the IPR that we have, we can go ahead and start uh, maybe rendering our final render. So I'm going to stop my IPR, go to my render setting here. And in the options menu, if you want to actually see the result of your final render in the virtual frame buffer, you need to enable show VFB window. Otherwise the result when you actually press this uh, render to picture viewer will show uh, in the Cinema 4 d picture viewer. So I'm gonna go ahead and enable virtual frame buffer. And if you are happy with uh, Cinema 4 d picture viewer, you can uh, render it in there. Now in the NTL Async tab, you can define the sampler type. We have this progressive sampler uh, and uh, we have the bucket sampler. Uh, it's really up to you, but progressive will uh, give you a feedback from the very uh, start, but bucket is that uh, kind of original old way of doing the renders uh, with buckets, you know, uh, the way we have, uh, we are used to do renders in V-Ray for Cinema 4D, but we have this new progressive way, which allows you to progressively refine the final render uh, and see a feedback from the very starting point. We're gonna be talking about this stuff, but for now, I'm gonna just go ahead and use the bucket make sure my sampler settings are what I want them to be. That's good, we have our indirect illumination. In this case, I'm gonna, it's a very simple scene and probably Iridian's map will be just fine. Uh, we can go ahead and adjust the settings the way we wanted to, but I don't think we need to do anything, honestly. The light cache also is good. And okay, now my color mapping, we can adjust this stuff, but for now, we are happy with our render settings, let's say that. And uh, another thing I wanna add is to add some render elements. So I can go to my Vray Bridge, Vray Multipass Manager. If I'm kinda uh, planning to do a, a composite uh, and do a compositing of my render in a software like Nuke or After Effects, I add the specific render elements that I want, like the Fuse, uh, GI, Lighting, uh, Reflection, Refraction, stuff like that. But in this case, let me just delete these denoiser. In this case, I just want to add a simple denoiser render element. So uh, in the special channels, add denoiser and make sure the uh, mode is set to store the noise result in separate elements. 
in this case because we want to actually see the denoiser in a separate render element beside our original kind of noisier version of our render and type set this to uh, denoise render element separately in this case just single pass denoise on RGB only so if you have any other render elements they wouldn't the denoiser wouldn't be applied to them we're just going to apply our denoiser to our main RGBA render and set the preset maybe something like mild so it wouldn't be that affected and now we are actually ready to render our final render so I'm gonna click on this render to picture viewer or shift and R shortcut and as you can see a very frame buffer will show up let's make sure we are in the RGB color channel and as you can see we have our GI passes and we have our final render as you can see and the render progress is in the Cinema 40s picture viewer yet you can see here and now the render is going to be finished just wait here a bit so there you have it the render is finished and we just need to wait a bit as you can see right now uh, Vira is applying the uh, denoising and we should have a denoiser render element so this is our final render in RGB color we have our all of these other passes that actually denoiser uses them to get our uh, denoiser pass and as you can see compared to our RGB pass I hope it shows up through this recording but as you can see it's quite uh, take a look for example at this shadowy area as you can see it's quite cleaner compared to our RGB color pass so and now in the uh, V-Ray frame very virtual frame buffer you can do uh, a lot for example I can enable my color correction let's say I'm not quite happy with the overall exposure of my camera and I can simply go ahead and adjust the exposure the way I want to right maybe go to my white balance and add or remove a specific color cast uh, from my render okay uh, maybe go to the color balance uh, make the shadows a bit bluer the highlights a bit warmer so all of that stuff can be done let me just turn up color balance or uh, add some very basic curve correction just to make the render had punch here so all of this stuff can be done simply in virtual frame buffer and now that you are done you can simply go ahead and save the current channel okay or save other uh, save all the image channels to separate files or save all the image channels to single uh, exr file so i can go ahead and click on this save current channel and uh, you know save out to find the version that i want to save my file give it a name and save the final render or I can go to and open up my uh, show we FB history window and here in these history settings you can actually define where you want to save your V-Race history and define the maximum size on disk that will be dedicated to this history and uh, you can just press save and there you go you have this render saved out in your V-Race history and uh, it will be uh, saved on your disk as well so there you have it that's the general workflow for working with VRA for Cinema 4D thank you for watching this free video tutorial from mographplus.com make sure to visit our website and check out our premium courses for Cinema 4D 3ds Max Arnold Render Maxwell VRA and much more and also make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel